Hey, what's going on everyone? This is Mitch. Good Saturday morning to you all. Hope you guys are having an awesome start to your weekend. Got you an update weather-wise on what potentially can unfold today. Watching a couple areas that could see some active weather, but overall I'm not seeing anything crazy to talk about. What's left over of what was supposed to be Alex before it made landfall in Florida. And technically the center of wherever the center is has not made landfall over the western uh, coast of Florida, but is expected to here in the coming hours. But it does not look like it's going to be a named storm before it hits the western coast of Florida, but it's still expected to become a tropical storm off after it gets off the coast of the southeast. But it still has not stopped it from uh, causing flooding issues across Miami, especially overnight, seeing some crazy videos. People still went out clubbing regardless of what the weather was, and there's a lot of people who got trapped. A lot of flooding in the city, um, but we're going to talk a little bit about that because they're experiencing some nasty weather down there in the southern tip of Florida as we speak, and we'll probably continue to do so over the, at least the first half of the day, then it starts to clear out by the later this afternoon. Then there's going to be an area in the middle of the country that could see some severe weather also. But um, if you guys have not subscribed, definitely consider doing that. Like the video if you like it, and I appreciate the support. And if you guys got anything that I can pray about, please put it in the comments below. It gives me an opportunity to pray over it, and it gives others an opportunity to do so too. So let's talk about the Storm Prediction Center. So you got this area to watch. There's going to be a chance for storms to fire up all along this marginal risk in the middle of the country, but really it's the slight risk that we watch out for today where some big-time storms could form in Nebraska areas of northern Kansas today. We're going to talk a little bit about that. And then the other area to watch is this very small area down here. Might be a little difficult to see on your screen. I'll get a little bit closer look here in a second. But you got a slight risk up. And really, this is for the um, the first half of this time period. You know, this always goes from Saturday morning, well, to the morning, to the next morning, a 24-hour period. So technically, this will today last all the way through Sunday morning. But you got the slight risk up for, you know, obviously the big city being Miami, but the entire southeast coast of southern areas of Florida. So that's what we need to pay attention to here in the coming hours. And that's because y'all have a 5% risk to see a tornado 25 miles in any given location and a 2% risk uh, expanding a little further back to your northwest. But then you got the 2% risk out here too. So be careful with that. When when damage threat really is the biggest across the middle of the country with this slight risk and the health threat's kind of the same. Usually with tropical systems, the dynamics don't really support hail so much, if at all. But with this middle of the country threat here with a slight risk, hell will be an issue with some of these storms that form. We'll have to watch this a little bit later today. Let's go closer look at Florida. And here it is. Here's that slight risk down here. And, uh, you know, this is just purely driven off this tropical system. We call it PTC-1, which is Potential Tropical Cyclone 1. It's usually what they dub these uh, systems right before they make them a tropical storm or a depression. Normally, a lot these days you see it skip from a PTC-1 or PTC-2, whatever it may be, however deep you are into the technical name list, uh, to just straight to a tropical storm. And I think that'll happen once we get off the coast of the southeast, once it gets away from this crazy shear is experiencing right now. And here it is, the technical location of this storm is, uh, well, the, the center of it is right into here, probably. Um, and I say probably because even the experts have had a hard time figuring out where's the actual main low level circulation. I think before I went to bed last night, there was three areas and, and, you know, none of them was more dominant than the other. So it's just been all over the place. And you see all this dry air, this black area right here, that is sheer and dry air due to this upper trough that's dug into the Gulf of Mexico, which is uh, decently common this time of year, still very early in the hurricane season, and this happens a lot. The conditions in the Gulf of Mexico are usually pretty hostile, and uh, they just eat up these tropical systems. But um, this thing is really having a hard time getting going, and therefore never really did enough to call it a tropical storm before making landfall in Florida. Technically, I don't think it's, it technically still hasn't. But uh, it will here in the coming hours, and it's not going to have enough time. I mean, you still got convection blowing up south of Cuba from this thing. So uh, the convection is all over the place and will continue to be all over the place over the lifespan of this system. But what will still likely be Alex. And, uh, you know, here's the latest from around 5 a.m. This is still expecting to become a tropical storm. 
um, especially when it gets off the coast of Florida, the eastern coast. So you still got tropical storm warnings up right now. You even got them up in the northern Bahamas. Um, and really it's because if you see, look really hard right here, this little orange area, this is basically saying where the worst weather is going to be. And you noticed no bad, you notice no bad weather is going to be to the northern, to the northwest and western end of the storm. All of it's basically to the east, to southeast side of this storm. So, um, you know, it's pretty interesting to see. We'll look at the radar right now down here. It's the southern tip of Florida. This is a lot of rain. And with these, any of these little streamers, um, you're going to have a tornado threat and it's going to be usually embedded. You see these little uh, notches right here. Those you probably have some water spouts with these uh, little cells right here. Watch out. Even the most northern island of uh, the Bahamas here. You guys could see the potential for a, a low end tornado threat here in the coming hours for sure. And it's because all this rain, all this moisture is technically on the east to southeast side of this circulation, was, which is probably somewhere out here. Um, so, you know, it, it's very hard to figure out where the actual center of this storm is, but it's not, it's not right here. It's not at all. But any of these bands of showers and storms are definitely going to produce flooding but they have an outside chance to produce a tornado too. A lot of flooding in Miami overnight. In fact, y'all have flash flood warnings right now. So we keep going forward here and we look at what can unfold for the entire Southeast today. Really your eyes are just probably gonna focus in on this and we'll continue to have showers and storms, gusty weather, flooding conditions down here in the Southern tip of Florida. But you notice by the time we get to about two, three, four o'clock, the worst of the weather's over. And in fact, I mean, it'll probably dry out by the time the sun, uh, not dry out there. I mean, there's going to be areas where there's still going to be standing water, but it'll probably begin to, the sun will come out and it'll probably be pretty decent weather, especially on the Western coast of Florida. By the time um, you get to the evening hours around dinner time, I mean, it's going to be probably breezy as the actual low pressure is moving ahead. But still, I mean, it, It'll end up being a nice second half of the day for areas of probably western Florida especially. But some of this moisture will pivot some big time storms potentially into the eastern areas of uh, really South Carolina especially. So watch out for your Myrtle Beach Charleston today. You know, it'll be a good beach day for most of the day, but expect some showers and storms to fire up a little bit later for sure. Maybe some clouds hanging around due to the uh, the cloud bank from this tropical system, but I think this starts to get its act together after it gets off the coast of the southeast for sure here. A little bit closer look at what could potentially unfold with this system today and just, you know, you're just going through the morning hours, still showers, a tornado threat uh, will continue through the early afternoon hours and maybe just some lingering showers and storms are possible throughout the after late afternoon and evening hours, but it becomes a lot less widespread, that's for sure. But Rain potential really is going to be the worst here between now and the next few hours. Now, I think this is a little overdone because it's probably accounting for some of the rain that's already fell over the last few hours, which has been a lot. But there's still a chance here between now and I would say the next five to six hours to pick up several inches of rain at the southern areas of Florida for sure. So please be careful down there. Uh, going up to the northeast, we'll stop talking about the tropical system. It's probably be the last real video I make about it because, I mean, honestly... Um, it's not going to be affecting land after this, but we'll still do briefings on it and still talk a little bit on it for sure. But the Northeast, pretty quiet today. The only thing we're watching is is an area of, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if some of these could be strong or severe. Some storms are possible for basically only Maine today. A line of showers and storms moves through, uh, forms, and then begins to weaken as it gets to the down east areas of Maine. But uh, you guys could see some rain today for sure in areas of Maine. Areas of the south central U.S. today, uh, some showers and storms could pop up along a dry line, So, but it are going to be very isolated, as they always are. You see these storms right into here. That's what's left over to what will likely be some severe storms in Nebraska a little bit later today. But you could have one lone, really big supercell that could form, or two, in areas of central Texas today. So please be careful if you're out there. Um, it's very hard to predict exactly where those always do form. But watch out in this area today. A little bit later today, you know, you got some ridging out west. So you got a little bit of a flow from the northwest, which isn't, I mean, I'm not going to say it's not common, but uh, you typically don't, don't see this as much. But you got a flow coming and you're going to have some pop-up showers and storms that form here. But these could produce just your typical 
uh, plains kind of environment to these storms, if you will, where you're going to have a low end tornado threat. Some of them can be very photogenic, but normally remember these storms that are photogenic normally produce those that large hail, damaging winds. So be careful if you're in Nebraska today, northern areas of Kansas, big time storms are possible today. Not a, a major event, you know, super significant, but uh, it's definitely going to impact almost all of this area right into here of Nebraska where some storms can move through this afternoon. The central and eastern U.S. as far as temperatures, overall a much cooler day as the upper trough has really kind of moved through the entire region. Uh, areas of the deep, deep south, the Gulf um, Coast could get into the 90s. But outside of that, I mean, 90s in Texas, as you always see this time of year, but 80s across the mid-south, the southeast, um, you know, the northeast will actually be pretty pleasant today. Temperatures in the 60s and 70s. Uh, Maine's going to see them showers and storms, uh, rain, cooled air into this region right here. Um, but it warming up all the way into the Great Lakes region, 70s, a nice day expected. T typical average kind of weather for this time of year. Um, out west, it, it, I mean, it, it's pretty active, nothing too crazy to talk about, but some light ridging over this part of the country right into here. So you got a flow that comes in off this, uh, this ridge because the flow goes around the ridge. So you have system after system that keeps entering the Pacific Northwest. And hopefully we can get some rain down here in California. It looks like we are a little bit later this afternoon, this evening. A big round of rain will move into northern areas of California. So that's good. They always need to rain there. And then you're going to have a lot of scout, scattered showers and storms in areas of Montana. And just system after system rods this ridge and then floats back down the ridge down here. And that's why you're getting those uh, areas of... Uh, storms in areas like Nebraska and things like that. But this could be a lot of rain that could fall over the next 24 hours in Oregon, Washington State, Idaho, Montana, Northern California. So uh, definitely expect that today. Temperatures going to be a little cooler on the northern side of this ridge where you got a little bit of troughing, a little bit cooler than average. But everybody else around average, no, nothing crazy compared to below average or above average. But um, that's about all I got. Thank you all for tuning in. I have you a video this evening um, talking about whatever's next. It's just getting to that time of the year where if there isn't severe weather to talk about or if there isn't the tropics to talk about, there isn't a whole lot to talk about, but we'll talk about what there is to talk about. So um, y'all have a great day and I'll talk to y'all this morning.